In Africa, there's something called bright price. And if you have not given that, you are not married. And according to scripture, the bright price was Jesus paid in blood. And the implication of that is that the moment your bride price is paid, you no longer have access to property rights. And that's why you can no longer fulfill your ambition. The errand of your ego is blotted out because the bride price has been paid. Even though he paid the bride price, he will not ask you for consecration, for complete committal, which is his right. He will wait for you to come to the point of realization of the fact that you are in debt are you there and then you go complete i know many people that are born again but are still trying to live out their dreams trying to become their plan work out their plans and make it come to pass orchestrate their destiny so he waits for you to come to the realization of the fact that you are bought. You are not yours. You are his. And when that knowledge comes to you, he gives you more time to become noble enough to give him his due. That's the commentar, consecration. But I will not live for myself anymore. I will live for you. The scripture says, because uh, I know you know that the principle that was exploited to accomplish our salvation was substitution. I know you know that. What's the meaning of substitution? Imagine that Evans is my twin brother and a prototype, exactly like I am. And I go somewhere and I'm, I am an arm robber. He's a cool guy. I go somewhere and rob. The police comes to kill me, take me away, and he decides to take my place. You know, the first thing I'll need to do, now that he has decided to take my place and he dies for me, is that I need to change my name. I must become him. Because me, the me, has been prosecuted, so I must change my identity to make his identity my identity. So the implication of substitution is that you will need to live his own life. If you decide to live yours, it is illegal after he stood in the gap to take away your own shame. So the, the life left for you to live is his life. That is consecration. I choose not to be my own master. It is only a consecrated man that can be asked to leave the oil industry in Nigeria when you are about to become a manager. And you do that. It's proof that you know that you are not your own. I will serve his will to the end of my days because he is worthy. So a mighty spiritual thing took place here. This altar he raised to God was the end of his ambition, the end of him. And then his grandson comes to the same place. That's what we just read. And he wants to live his life. But unfortunately for him, he had stumbled into the circumference of the covenant of his ancestors. Are you there? Oh, you're not there. He, God would have left him if not that he's so good to take on the covenant of his father. Ah, do you know what it means? He took it on. But he was not ready to pay the price. His father's prayer. He was still a rolling stone, a reggae rag. He wanted to tour the lands and spend his life. And God was not going to fight with him. God said, I am the God of your father Abraham. I am the God of your father Isaac. This land that you are lying on today, I'm going to give you and your seed. And I will not leave you until I have accomplished that which I spoke unto you. 
Do you know that the guy woke up from that sleep and negotiated the terms and conditions for him to give his life to Christ? Now, let me show you. Let me show you that. Are you still with me? Right. Where are we? Genesis 28. 28, 20. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me. First request. First item of negotiation. You decide who you are with and who you are not with. But if you will, by any means, be with me. And keep me in the way that I go. And give me bread. So he negotiated his food because he, he, he knows that there's fluctuations in the economy. So he said, can you guarantee that, that I find food? Give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. I, I must not look shabby. I need to look good. <laughs> Next verse there. When you guarantee this, and also guarantee that as I'm going home, going out from the house, you will bring me back again in peace. Because my brother is on my neck. Can you guarantee peace? He said, when you have done this, then shall the Lord be my God. That's when I will give my life. I don't know how my father has followed you, but me, I negotiate before I get involved. Whenever you come to this point, where are you? You are in Hara. Because of this, this transaction he attempted to make, his life almost wasted with labor. This one was not a travel party that was responsible for the delay. It was his unwillingness to trust the God of his fathers. And he was on the same ground that his ancestor registered his complete committer. It was in that ground he was negotiated. So he entered into his own harem. So when he moved into the land that he was praying that God should keep him, he saw a damn set. It seems, it seems things are lighting up. <laughs> and when he awoke from his wedding night, he saw that the damsels were switched. Seven years had gone. And the father said, you know, you can still spend some time and labor for this one. And Haran, the same Haran scenario began to play out. Such that by the time he was coming back, he saw that he had everything he bargained with God for. But he did not have the presence of God with him. So he had to come back to this location. And God reserved an encounter with him. That was an encounter that transformed him into Israel. And the Israel that he became was a man that was leaping on his staff. He had lost that natural energy with which he negotiated. He had arrived at a place of complete commitment. So what will waste your life is your inability, your unreadiness to stage a complete commitment to serve the will of God. 